Welcome to Film 5D, the show about everything film and video, now with the A7S III. I'm Aaron Hammack, and today I'll be comparing the 85mm G Master 1.4 to the Zeiss Batis 85mm 1.8. Alright, so I know that this lens has been out for a few years now, but I'm currently going through my lens collection and upgrading all my old Sony and Zeiss lenses that I got five, six, seven years ago and upgrading them to the G Master lineup from Sony. First, I upgraded my 24-70 f4 Zeiss to the G Master 2.8. Then more recently, I upgraded my 35mm 2.8 Zeiss to the new G Master 35mm 1.4. And now we're taking a look at my old Zeiss Batis 85mm 1.8 and seeing if it's a worthwhile upgrade to this 1.4 from Sony. So hopefully if you're watching this video and one, you're looking to decide between these two lenses or two, you're looking to make the same exact upgrade that I'm making right now, then hopefully this video will help make that decision. Before we jump into the test though, I'd like to point out one fact that I didn't even realize about the Batis lineup of lenses. They're not full frame lenses. They're listed as E-mount versus F-E-mount. When I was looking to sell my Batis lens in order to upgrade to this one, it was listed as an E-mount and I figured it was just a typo, but in my test, you'll actually see that in fact, the Batis is slightly cropped in. It might not be that whole 50%, you know, 1.5 times crop factor that you get with an APS-C sized lens, but it definitely has a slight crop factor, maybe 20 to 30%, something in that range. Now, this isn't an issue for those of you who are shooting with an A6500, for example, or some other APS-C sensors from the Sony lineup. But for those of us who are looking for that full frame look, like with the A7S III that I'm using, this is definitely a no-go for most people. I'm just surprised I'm only just now realizing this after owning this lens for five years. And I'm just glad I didn't you know, upgrade further in the Batis lineup because they were definitely attractive as they were coming out with the 25 millimeter and 18 millimeter. And I definitely consider getting those in the past, especially with that sweet LCD display that shows the focus distance. That all made these a very enticing lineup of lenses, but they're not full frame. But how much does this actually affect the image and should you even care? Well, we're gonna jump into some tests in a second, but before that, I just wanted to call out that the Sony G Master 1.4 does come with a lens hood, comes with a lens cap. It is a rather hefty lens. It also comes with their carrying case, which I much prefer to the Sony uh, G lens carrying cases, which are leather. These ones definitely hold up better over time. It also comes with a lens strap that you're most likely not going to use. And as we see right here, we can see just the general size comparison between these two lenses. And just know that the Sony is about, I would say 70% heavier. But without further ado, let's jump into some tests. All right, here we are taking a look at the tests. Of course, we're gonna start with the brick wall test to measure sharpness. These are both at 5.6. Here's the Zeiss, the first one was the Sony. We zoom into the middle, we'll see at 400%, the Sony has a slight edge here. And then if we look at the corners, it also has a slight edge, but they're both pretty good. At 2.8, we don't notice any vignetting in either of them. They're both pretty sharp. The Zeiss is slightly softer, um, but so the Sony's gonna win here again. You can also see the Zeiss is moving around a little bit just because of the stabilization. Here's at 1.8, still not seeing any major vignetting, still pretty sharp for both. I'll give the win again to the Sony here, but by a very small margin. So if you're looking at sharpness, both of these lenses are gonna do you pretty good. And here we can see a contrast between the both just to check on vignetting. Again, we're not seeing too much of that going on. But we will also look at the 1.4 for the 85 millimeter GM and see that it's still pretty, pretty solid here. Very sharp lenses, both of these. This is in the center, blown up 400%, and the corner here, 400%, still just as sharp as pretty much any other one. Now let's take a look at landscaping. First one's gonna be the G Master, and here's the Zeiss. Here we can start to see, to see a little bit of a color shift. So we, as we can see, the, the GM looks a little bit to me more filmic, um, a little bit more true to life. And then the Zeiss, again here we have a little bit of movement going on with the Zeiss, but mostly for the most part pretty sharp. Even at F9, not gonna see too big of a difference between either of these as we shift between them again. There's a little bit of a color shift um, but it's gonna depend on whether or not you like the look of the Sony or the Zeiss here. I prefer the Sony. 
Here's the G Master at 2.8. We're going to look at depth of field now. And then here's the Zeiss at 2.8. You can see a huge color shift here, despite using the exact same settings, same everything. Huge color shift here. At 1.8, we have the Sony. And then we're going to look at the Zeiss at 1.8 as well. Both of them produce pretty good bokeh um, in this environment, outdoors with flowers. And here's at 1.4 just for fun, just to show how low you can go with the Sony. We're also gonna do a little bit of a focus test here. Here's the Zeiss, which is really struggling to pull focus here manually. It's not very accurate. And the Sony, this is me doing it by hand, much smoother, so it's not fly by wire. Now here we go with focus breathing. Uh, the other G Masters I've reviewed have had a lot more focus breathing than this 85 millimeter, especially the 35 millimeter and the 50. Uh, but the Zeiss has a ton of focus breathing here, especially for an 85 millimeter prime. So definitely a win there for the Sony. And this is focus speed. So very smooth autofocus for the G Master, but the Zeiss is just way faster as we can see here. Still very accurate, but way faster in terms of the focus pull. And then here we see the G Master at 1.4, just to show the difference in the depth of field between the 1.8 1.4 on the Zeiss versus the Sony. And now we take a look at focus closeness, uh, the minimal focus distance. And for both of these, they're pretty much the same at 2.8. Didn't notice a huge difference here. The Zeiss gets a slight edge just because of that crop factor. The fact that it's not a full frame lens. And now let's look at bokeh, everybody's favorite thing with these lenses. This is the, the Sony G Master at 2.8. And here is the Zeiss at 2.8. You can see a lot more edging there, a lot more kind of octagon, distagon, whatever the nine shape thing is. And as we zoom into 350%, you can see the Sony is much more round than the Zeiss here, um, which is preferred by many. And here's at 1.8 for the G Master, still pretty round, especially as we get to the edges. Unlike here with the Zeiss, you get to the edges, you get a little bit more kind of a disc shape, oval shape um, to those what are supposed to be circle bokeh. And here it is just for fun at 1.4. Uh, gets a little bit darker here, but still very round towards the edges, which is very impressive. And here is the G Master just across the spectrum. And there is the Zeiss. You can see a lot less round, a lot more edges going on. And then just for fun, here is the 1.4 for the Sony. And then last but not least, we're just gonna to check to see if there's any issues with flares. And I'd say these are pretty close, if not tied. I think the Zeiss maybe loses slightly and that there's a little bit more kind of weird flares going on with it, but they both handle it pretty well. All right, so there you have it. What'd you think? Did you notice the difference between the lenses, especially when it came to the image quality, given that the Batis isn't even meant for full frame cameras necessarily? or were they pretty close? I actually thought they were pretty close in sharpness, but there definitely was some advantages and disadvantages of the G Master 1.4. I wasn't too surprised given the price difference um, that the G Master won out in a lot of these categories. It is in fact $600 more expensive, but more on that later, the Sony really did outperform the Batis in many tests, including speed, obviously. It's a two thirds of a stop brighter than the Batis. The bokeh was also much smoother and rounder, especially near the edges as you stop down. It was also ever so slightly sharper than the 1.8, most likely because the GM is full frame, unlike the E-mount Batis. Also, the focus is accurate and repeatable, which is probably the biggest factor for me as I'm going to be using this for both photography and video. Unlike what you get with the Batis, which is fly-by-wire, as you can see here, it really struggles to do manual focus pulls. Now also the G Master has physical buttons. It has the aperture ring, it has the switch for the declickable aperture ring, it has a customizable button. And I just personally prefer this to the LCD display, which after owning the Batis for five years, I don't think I ever use that thing more than a handful of times. And then finally, the big plus for the G Master is the focus breathing, which was much, very well controlled on the GM versus the Batis, which wasn't really the case when I was reviewing the 35 millimeter 1.4. And of course, as I mentioned, I would be remiss if I didn't further dive into this whole full frame E-mount versus E-mount difference. 
With the G Master, you're getting a true 85 millimeter frame that is taking full advantage of your full frame camera. Whereas with the Batis, you are cropped in a bit and personally, it's just a bit too telephoto for my taste. However, there are some things I don't like about the G Master compared to the Batis. For one, the size and weight. This thing weighs almost two pounds. I think the Batis is, Batis, Batis is one pound. So this is, I think 1.7 pounds or something like that. It's also much wider, which is obviously going to be the case the lower you stop down that aperture. This is a 1.8, so it's two-thirds of a stop lower. Therefore, it's going to generally be a slightly bigger lens. Now, I did run into issues when using this thing directly on a tripod as it extends below the bottom of the camera. So if you're going to be using this thing on a tripod, I'd recommend using you know, a battery grip, something like this, or putting it on a rig so that it raises it above. Uh, the tripod so that it has a chance to clear the hot plate otherwise you're going to have issues with it rubbing up against it and i was certainly having those issues during these tests and as was the case with the last lens review i did the zeiss batis here was ultra fast when it came to focus speed which was another area where it actually beat the sony g master also the g master does not have inbuilt stabilization so you'll have to rely on the camera body for that feature whereas the batis does have in lens stabilization and in fact i kind of forgot that fact when i was doing these tests and so you kind of saw the batis image drifting a little bit over time which is that instabilization not only with the body but also the lens also the g master like i said before is 600 dollars more expensive if you buy it brand new i actually got mine for about 400 dollars less than the full price, so I got it for around $1,400 used on B&H with a condition rating of nine. I definitely recommend if you're ever investing in lenses, especially ones that have been out for six months, a year, go on B&H and see if they have a used one available because they're most likely gonna be used like new, like an open box that they basically just can't sell brand new. And so if you can get a deal like that, then it definitely makes much more of a sense to make this upgrade. Otherwise, you could probably get a Batis, you know, brand new for 1200 used for $800, $900, so I can't really argue that the G Master is 50% better than the Batis, but I guess it depends on how much you value some of the pros and cons of the GM versus the Batis. For example, if you really hate fly-by-wire and you're gonna use this absolutely all the time for video, then the GM is gonna be a no-brainer for you. Now, if you're interested in this lens or any of the other ones I mentioned in this video, click the links in the description below. By buying through my links helps to support this channel so that I can make more videos like this one and I really do appreciate it. Next, I'm gonna be taking a look at the Sony 50 millimeter G Master 1.2 lens and comparing it to the Sony Zeiss 55 millimeter 1.8. So make sure you're subscribed for that. But that's it for this video. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed this quick review or thumbs down if you could care less about this lens. Leave any questions in the comments below and I'll do my best to respond there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. If you haven't subscribed yet, you can do so by clicking the button on screen. And for more information about the Sony 85mm 1.4G Master, as well as other Sony lenses, check out my blog over on my website at filmin5d.com. Thanks again for watching.